Oh my goodness, sorry to keep everybody waiting. I'm not used to going places in San Francisco anymore. I sit at a computer all day and I'm on Zoom calls. I'm like, wait a minute, this is in person? How exciting it is to be here today. And I just wanna thank you all so much for joining us. I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed and I am joined today by some members of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. I see Supervisor Catherine Stephanie, as well as Supervisor Myrna Melgar. And do we have any other supervisors? We have our school board member, Jenny Lamb, joining us as well. And many commissioners and other folks who are part of you know, the fabric of San Francisco. And the reason why we're here today with so many amazing women is because we know that since this pandemic began, women have really had a, a, a serious challenge. It's not bad enough that women, in fact, make about 80% to the dollar that men make, and African-American women more in the 60%, and Latino women more in uh, about 50 cent per dollar. It's not bad enough that we're not paid as much, but because of the fact that you know, there was challenges with childcare, challenges with school, access to transitions to new uh, and rewarding opportunities in the uh, work industry, women have suffered really during this pandemic. And so it was so important to me that when we were looking at our economic recovery as San Francisco began to open, that we think about ways in which we can invest in supporting and uplifting women in San Francisco. And so today we have some really great announcements. Now, yes, it's been hard, but two thirds of San Franciscans have been vaccinated. So as we began to reopen, we wanna keep people safe. And we are hopeful, Jenny Lamb, that we are gonna get the schools open this fall because I don't know about you, but I'm sure many of the parents are ready to see their kids go back to school. Now with that, what we are announcing today, I think is gonna be really incredible. And it has a lot to do with so many of the women expressing you know, concerns about leaving one industry to another. So if they were working in the hospitality industry, it's like, this is the sector I'm working in, but the hospitality industry was really devastated during this pandemic. So how do we provide ways for people to shift? Uh, and so part of the announcement today is really focusing on training and getting people prepared for various industries in San Francisco. So we're announcing 300 training opportunities that will help women Women in the hospitality sector, in the construction sector, in the tech sector, and a number of industries where whatever we choose to do, because we know we are women and we are fierce, we can jump on those opportunities. But it's not just about an opportunity. It's about what do you do with your children when you're trying to work? And so childcare plays an important role, but here's the challenge we've had in San Francisco. We have resources sometimes for the very low income women, although we may not have a sufficient number of slots. And then there's those women that basically just are right over the threshold where they don't necessarily qualify, but they have challenges with affording childcare. And so we are announcing today that not only are we gonna be providing slots for more of our very low income uh, women for their children who need childcare, but for those moderate to middle income women as well, 800 new slots for childcare. Cause you know, mothers, they work hard, but they need a break. And I don't know if you all remember when you were a kid and how, how many problems you probably gave to your parents, but I know my, I was a handful with my grandmother. So I understand when she was like, go ahead, she can go, take her, I need a break. Well, it's not just about a break, it's about the learning loss, it's about the opportunity, it's about mental health, it's about playing with other children, it's about having a well-rounded childhood and making sure that our child care centers are funded, our educators are funded in a sufficient way that we're able to provide some sense of normalcy after having such a tough year. So today is really about making sure that women are uplifted and supported, that we continue to break down those barriers as we head down the road of recovery. Yes, San Francisco is a major city, a dense city with many, many challenges, but you know what? This is a challenge that we have to consistently work on. It should not be an issue, but it is an issue for women in San Francisco and all over the country. And so with that, 
the person who is going to lead this effort, a mom herself, who in fact, I was on meetings with her as she was dealing with distance learning with her child. And I know it's been really, really tough, but we are so excited to have as our new executive director of the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, Kate Solfis. Good morning. So as I stand here day seven, day six into this new job for the city I love, I am very aware that I stand here on the shoulders of generations of women in my family, mostly single mothers in my family. And as I raise my children, my SF-born children here in San Francisco, two daughters, one of whom is intellectually and developmentally disabled, I am well aware that I wouldn't be standing here and I wouldn't be free to contribute what I can to our city were it not for the incredible schools that have supported my kids and the childcare, especially for my younger daughter, especially in the early years when many childcare facilities didn't know how to handle someone with significant disabilities. Rec and Park Inclusion stepped in, GGRC stepped in, and I am privileged to be able to do what I do as a direct byproduct of being a woman, being supported in this way. I grew up the daughter of another single mom in Buffalo, New York, working class, and she was not supported in the same way. She was always struggling to make ends meet, out of work, trying to figure out how to borrow neighbors to, to help care for my brother and I. And so I'm also aware of the unnecessary struggles we put women through trying to balance all that they do. So as I stand here today, thank you, Mayor Breed. Thank you, my team at OEWD. Thank you, everyone standing behind me. I can't be more proud than to have this be one of the first initiatives launched under my helm. And I commit to you and to this city, this is the first, it will not be the last, that women and their children and their families are a key part of our economic recovery plan, a key part of equity in this city, and a key part of our future, and you have my commitment to lead the way. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. And now we have Serena Marie, who is a Healthcare Academy graduate um, from, with Homebridge. Good morning. I would like to thank Mayor Breed, Healthcare Academy, thank you, Healthcare Academy, and all those who put this wonderful event together. I want to thank you for inviting me to share my story. My name is Serena Maria, and I am a care supervisor at Homebridge. Several years ago, I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field, and Homebridge gave me that opportunity as hiring me as a home care provider. During my time at Homebridge, I wanted to continue to grow in the field, so I decided to participate in their career advancement program, which is a collaboration of the Healthcare Academy and Homebridge. Through this training, I was able to gain the skills and experience needed to continue to explore advancement opportunities with Homebridge. In the training program, not only did I learn the technical skills of the job, but I also learned the interpersonal skills that have helped me not only support my clients and home care providers, but also has helped me in my everyday personal life. Shortly after completing the program, I was able to advance into a mentorship role supporting new providers coming into our organization. Eventually, I was promoted to care supervisor which is my current position. These advancement opportunities help me to support my family, especially during the pandemic. This experience has also contributed to my ability to support home care providers I supervise who provide critical care for some of our most vulnerable members of the community, contributing to the safe reopening of our city as well. 
Once again, I would like to thank the Healthcare Academy and Homebridge for creating advancement opportunities through effective training programs. My hope is that more women will be able to benefit from collaborative programs like these through the Mayor's Initiative. Thank you so much. And at this time, I want to introduce uh, members of the Board of Supervisors, uh, Myrna Melgar and Catherine Stephanie. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, I am so grateful to your administration and uh, for your vision of centering our economic recovery on women's needs. I, uh, along with Supervisor Stephanie, um, worked on a resolution early on this year to ask our city to do just that, and I'm so grateful that the mayor has responded. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for women, we cannot go back to the way it was before the pandemic. We need to make progress. And to make progress on social and economic issues, we need to make sure that women have the tools that they need to succeed and that children have the need, their needs met. And so I, uh, I think that this is a great step and I look m forward to more in the future. Supervisor. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor, and thank you to Mayor Breed for gathering all of these incredible women today and for basically walking the walk. She knows exactly how to respond when there is a need that's unmet. And to do what she's doing for mothers who need childcare, to lift mothers up, to lift working women up, is exactly what we need to respond to this pandemic. I'm so proud to be a part of the Board of Supervisors and women that actually show up for women. I am so excited that we have Kate Sophis leading the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. There's that one phrase, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And today we are at the table. So thank you, Mayor Breed, and thank you to everyone who's here today. Thank you. Well, women in this city are definitely at the table. And we're running things. Yes, women everywhere. Anyway, um, you know, I just really appreciate uh, these two amazing women on the Board of Supervisors. Um, sadly, many of you heard about the tragedy that occurred in San Jose, and our hearts go out to uh, the families of, of the people who lost their lives in this tragedy, and the mayor, Sam Licardo, who I've already reached out to. I really want to thank Catherine Stephanie for her advocacy and leadership around gun violence in this city. Uh, it is so important and so critical. And I really want to thank Myrna, who, as a new supervisor, she's considered basically a freshman supervisor, but already has hit the ground running and made her mark around programming and support for children in particular. So we have some additional announcements as we began to wind down this budget process. Uh, these two incredible women have been advocating for the kinds of resources that will deliver for the people of San Francisco, and I really appreciate their partnership in this effort. All right, next up we have Tracy List, who is the executive director of Frandilla. Am I saying that right? You were close. Okay, there you go. Come on in, tell me how to say it. Frandilla. Oh, Frandilla. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much, Mayor Breed. Frandelja started in 2000 in a collaboration with the mayor's office at that time to meet an unmet need for low-income families. This initiative is the perfect extension and next step for what's needed. Every year we get families who call who do not qualify. They don't make little enough money, like anyone wants to make less money, right? Especially our moms, our single moms. They don't make enough to qualify, and so we, we don't have anything to help them. We did fight for some scholarship programs so that they could come to our center, and it still wasn't enough. I don't know if you know, but that a family, a single family with a few kids, the fee for low income is one fee for the whole family. So even if they're paying the highest cost, it's maybe $600 a month for three kids. And then they don't qualify anymore. They get the boost, they get the promotion, they go on the track to get career advancement, and they don't qualify. Now you're looking at about $2,000 a month per child. Who can jump from $600 to $6,000 a month out of their pocket for care? It's been an impossible task. 
we saw in the pandemic how important childcare, schools, and meeting the needs for children was for working families. And this initiative is prime to help us recover in a way that we haven't seen before. 800 slots for moderate to middle income families is an amazing thing. And we're so honored to be a part of it. It's a natural next, next step for us. And we're looking forward to working with those families, to working with the city and, and all of the leaders of San Francisco, including Mayor Breed, to make this happen. We're committed with the Office of Early Care and Education, the mayor's office, to have successful opportunities, quality care for kids, and to help families achieve both economic and educational success as we move forward. This is a good day. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco, and it's an amazing day for women. Thank you so much. And yes, it's an amazing day for women, and I can't necessarily call out all of the women here, but all of the people here who are almost faceless are women who are leaders in various capacities in the city. They make this work happen. Uh, Ingrid Mesquita is the director of the Office of Early Childhood Education. Thank you, Ingrid, for all of your work and your advocacy. We have women from uh, the Human Rights Commission. I see Hala Hajazi in the house. Um, I see Sharon Lai from MTA. I know other women from uh, the Commission on the Status of Women Commission is, are here uh, joining us, as well as A. Philip Randolph Institute. Thank you so much, Jackie, for all the amazing work you do. This, this, this represents a, a, an amazing coalition of leaders in San Francisco who are doing the hard work on the ground, women from all parts of San Francisco. The way we address the challenges around equity and we bring our city back stronger than ever is when we come together and we make sure that resources are not a barrier to the success and opportunities that we all deserve in life. And so that's what this is about. Today is just one step further in that direction. I'm looking forward to seeing the city come alive again and I'm looking forward to seeing this city continue and finally lift up those who too often have been left behind. This is another great opportunity. So thank you all so much for joining us here today.